Good evening. Thank you for joining us tonight for Crimson News 10 at 10, where we give you more news in less time. I'm Cody Proctor. We're starting things off tonight with the final two schools in the Pac-12 now suing in what they call a critical effort to preserve the conference. Crime 2 Shannon Mowdy breaks down the lawsuit tonight and spoke with WSU Athletic Director Pat Chun about what it means for their future. Washington State and Oregon State Universities argue they're fighting to preserve the Pac-12. Athletic Director Chun says they need to know what's there to preserve. In a 16-page lawsuit and separate request for a temporary restraining order, Washington State and Oregon State Universities argue the Pac-12 is violating its own rules by planning a board meeting for September 13th. It should not be this complicated. We just want to make sure that the bylaws are applied um, appropriately. WSU's athletic director Pat Chun says the legal steps are necessary in an effort to get clarity, starting with the conference rules. Because obviously we have our interests to protect. Oregon State has their interests to protect. The lawsuit argues the 10 schools that are withdrawing are no longer members of the board under the conference constitution and bylaws. That would leave OSU and WSU as the only members of the board. Both schools argue they should have control over business decisions, arguing the departing members forfeited that right. Business decisions like the state of the Pac-12. We've had a inability from the conference to get full transparency on the financial picture of the conference. Chun says they need to know the assets, liabilities, and other pieces of that picture in order to piece together what the future holds for Washington State. And once we make that analysis, it's gonna allow us the opportunity to make some decisions relative to what is what we need to salvage out of the conference or what is unsalvageable in the conference. A hearing on the suit is scheduled in Whitman County Court for Monday morning. We did also reach the Pac-12. They declined to comment. Friday's lawsuit comes a day before WSU football hosts its home opener against 19th ranked Wisconsin, a big game. Chun says that'll be a chance to prove Washington State is still Washington State. Shannon Mowdy, Crem 2 News. Shannon, thank you so much. That matchup will be a with a Power 5 team in the Wisconsin Badgers. At tomorrow's sold-out game, the Cougs will honor former head football coach Mike Leach. WSU will be giving away these commemorative Coach Leach Swing Your Sword flags. The former coach had a love for Pirates and would use the phrase to inspire his teams. And this Sunday, former Coug and Spokane native Steve Gleason serves as an honorary team captain for the New Orleans Saints in their game against the Tennessee Titans. Gleason's a former safety for the Saints. This is all to bring awareness to ALS, a progressive neurodegenerative disease affecting muscle function. He's been battling ALS since 2011. Time now for Night Beat for a quick look at the day's top stories. Two members of the Spokane City Council responding to concerns of unethical treatment at Spokane County Regional Protective Services tonight, otherwise known as Scraps. In a joint statement, Michael Cathcart and Karen Stratton announced they're preparing an ordinance to ensure animals are only euthanized when necessary, not just when Scraps is out of space. Scraps responded, stating, quote, we take allegations of this nature very seriously, but to but to due date, no evidence has been brought forward to support these claims. To be clear, Scraps does not euthanize animals due to capacity issues, end quote. The ordinance is expected to be reviewed on Monday with a possible vote on September 18th. In North Idaho, the results of the Bonner County election are now certified. Voters decided to recall two West Bonner County School District trustees in that election. A petition for recall against members Keith Rutledge and Susan Brown alleged they failed to fulfill their duties to improve schools and education in the district. According to Idaho law, the board must now begin the process to fill the two vacancies. And Spokane police connected a man to two shootings from Wednesday. Police say 19-year-old Abraham Valderas accused of shooting two people on Colton Street in Northeast Spokane early Wednesday morning. One of them died. SPD also believes Valderas is responsible for a shooting later that night outside of House of Charity in downtown Spokane that left another man injured. He's currently being held in the Spokane County Jail on a $1 million bond. And that was your night beat. To learn more about any of these stories, head to our website, creme.com. 
In the meantime, let's shift gears and take a look at our forecast with meteorologist Michelle Boss because this week we saw some cooler temperatures warming back up today. And how will the weekend shape up for that first full weekend at the fair, Michelle? It's going to feel like summer outside. Uh, we kind of dipped back down into the 70s this week. We're heading back into the 80s and we're going to see above average temperatures extending into next week as well. And that's going to come with a lot of sunshine as we take a look at satellite and radar. Uh, clear conditions, a little bit of ground clutter. It looks like showing up, but we're looking at dry conditions all across the inland northwest and should be plenty of sunshine, not only for Saturday and Sunday, but into next week and temperatures are going to respond by being well above average. We were in the upper 70s today and we'll warm it up even more so for Saturday and Sunday. Currently 68 in Spokane in the 50s in Deer Park and Sandpoint 60s across central Washington at just under 70 degrees right now in Lewiston. Short term forecast keeps the skies clear tonight and sunny all day. Tomorrow we'll bottom out with temperatures in the low to mid 50s and then go up from there looking at a high on Saturday of 82 degrees and even warmer on Sunday with sunshine a high of 84. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson plans to officially launch his campaign for governor tomorrow. He launched his exploratory campaign back in May. The kickoff event begins in Spokane tomorrow morning. Ferguson will be then then head to the Tri-Cities, followed by a rally in Seattle. That takes place at the Washington Hall Ballroom in central Seattle at 6 p.m. Speakers include Governor Jay Inslee and former Governor Christine Gregoire. Other names thrown into the race include Republicans Dave Reichert and Semi Bird, as well as State Senator Mark Mullet and Commissioner of Public Lands Hillary Franz, who are running as Democrats. Now, as Franz pursues her gubernatorial campaign, a new candidate's vying for your vote to be the next State Commissioner of Public Lands. Patrick DePoe currently serves as the Director of Tribal Relations at the Washington State Department of Natural Resources. Four other candidates are also running for the position. Tracking national headlines now tonight, the special grand jury investigating efforts to overturn Georgia's 2020 presidential election results recommended charges for Senator Lindsey Graham, two former U.S. senators and more than a dozen other people. A newly released report details Graham and former Georgia senators David Perdue and Kelly Loeffler, along with former national security advisor Michael Flynn, were among the people the grand jury thought should be indicted. Legal experts say grand juries use probable cause in deciding whether to recommend charges, but in the courtroom, prosecutors have to prove a defendant's guilt beyond a reasonable doubt. There is an additional process that goes on in prosecutors' offices before they seek charges in which they analyze the evidence and decide whether it's in the public interest to seek these charges. Trump's spokesman called the grand jury biased, saying they voted to indict dozens of innocent individuals. The report also reveals the 23-person grand jury voted overwhelmingly to recommend Trump face the 13 felony charges that are part of his indictment. Members of the panel spent more than seven months hearing from at least 75 witnesses. The grand jury recommended its report be made public. President Joe Biden's at the beginning of a trip through, Indo, through the Indo-Pacific, starting first in India. The talks between Biden and the India Prime Minister come of the, at, ahead of the start of the G20 summit. It's marked by the notable absence of the Chinese president and Russian president Vladimir Putin. Russia's war in Ukraine will be a big focus of the talks among the world leaders. President Biden's also using the trip to Asia to build support as America tries to counter the rising influence of China. He'll also visit Vietnam. Today marks one year since the passing of Queen Elizabeth II. Royal gun salutes rang out across the United Kingdom. A military ban also played to celebrate one year since King Charles took the throne after the death of his mother, Queen Elizabeth. The king attended a church service with Queen Camilla today and released a photo of his late mother, Prince Harry was also back in the UK paying tribute to his grandmother at a charity event.